Hi everybody, Joe Hawks here, and welcome to Hawks Notes Live! I'm joined in the studio with my three eldest children while the little one sleeps. We have Micah, hi Micah, hi. Leah, and Jenna. Thanks for joining us, kiddos. Uh, today we're going to be drawing a cyclops. Uh, so, for you younger viewers, this may be a little bit scary. Just kidding, we'll keep it pretty, pretty friendly. friendly, friendly giant type of thing. I want to tell you about a little experiment. The, the other day we were doing some, uh, some painting. We took some mat board scraps like this, just really small ones. Uh, and you can choose to do cardboard or heavier paper if you wish, uh, but we took some of some of this and we made little tiny paintings for uh, Mother's Day. The kids did it for their mom and their grandma. As so you can take watercolor, just really cheapo watercolor tray, and you can do, let me find a good example, you can do two little blotches. Two little blotches of color and let that dry. So once that's dry, you can start to draw in detail with a pencil. This guy is kind of, I don't know, he's kind of a grump, stone-faced man. Um, and it's really fun. It's a, just a fun, playful character design exercise that you can do. Uh, here's another one. This one ended up with kind of weird colored skin, but um, it's a great exercise just to um, come up with new and exciting kind of interesting characters. All right, let's jump in, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be doing drawing a cyclops, and this cyclops's name is Polyphemus, which means something like full of songs and stories. Um, this, uh, this character is in, uh, oh man, one of the, um, one of the sections of Homer's Odyssey. Um, this guy and his friends are coming back from a big war and they uh, get trapped in a cave and the cave is um, home to this huge cyclops, a big one-eyed monster. But it, it was a captivating story and, and I didn't learn about it until I was a freshman, I think, in high school. Thank you, Mr. Gordon Van, Van Zanten, who was an awesome teacher. And I've always kind of enjoyed drawing cyclopses. Is that the plural? Of Cyclops? I should, I should draw a Cyclops and I should draw a monster card of the Cyclops. Yes, you should. Okay, so let's jump in. We are drawing a Cyclops. And I'm gonna start with um uh, let's do draw lightly, but I would draw kind of a uh a, a bump. Like a rainbow. Like a rainbow, yeah. Um, but uh, somewhere um, toward the center, maybe pick a side, left or right, um, make kind of a, I don't, kind of a cross between a square and an oval. Um, this is going to be his head. And you can erase the section of shoulder, shoulder rainbow. That it covers up. Okay. Now we've already got the start of kind of a big galoot. Um, I don't know if this is how he was in the original story, but my Cyclops, I, I really want him to kind of feel like a, a big dumb oaf. Um, for his eye, I'm gonna make just kind of a big oval, maybe a little bit flatter on the bottom or top, that's up to you. And the eye, of course, is the most important part in this character, so we're going to spend a little bit of time on it. Inside of that eye, I want to get as close to a circle as I can, and then inside of that circle, another circle. 
We'll fill the inner circle in, shade that in, and then the other one, just a little bit lighter shading, maybe a little bit darker on the top side. Nice, good job guys. I'm gonna ever so lightly shade the underside of the eye. That just helps tell the viewer that this is a round, you know, a spherical shape, a ball-like shape. Um, and then I'm gonna put just a little bit of a wrinkle here to suggest that there's an eyelid there and another one right up here, just a little tiny ways away from the eye. Give it that suggestion of, of skin that can fold down and close that eye. I wonder if Cyclopses have tear ducts and if they do, which side is it on? Maybe it's on both sides. I don't know. Uh, now I'm gonna go down from the eye. And the nice thing is this is a made up creature so you can do really whatever you want. But I'm gonna make kind of a wide oval. Um, because he has a big eye right in the middle, we can't have much of a bridge of the nose. So I'm gonna make just kind of almost a button nose with a little, little bump there and a little bump there. So the nose is just kind of this uh, flat oval and then a little nostril there and a little nostril there. And if I remember right from the story, Polyphemus drinks a lot of wine and, and wine sometimes makes people's noses red. So I'm gonna give him a little bit of a, a shaded in nose to suggest that that's red. And this guy uh, can like fit a whole sheep into his mouth and so I want to give him a big mouth. You can keep it closed like that or you can open it up and show some of his teeth. Of course he's not going to have very pretty teeth. We're going to give him some really ugly snaggle teeth. Should he have like long hair since yeah, people you, never cut it? Yeah, feel free guys to give, to give your character other features like hair. I'm gonna skip hair myself for now um, and maybe come back and, and give him hair later. But if you guys wanna give your big cyclops an afro or, or long straight hair, or, um, you can do what you want. Some teeth at the top, adding some teeth at the bottom. Maybe I'll just put two teeth on the bottom. And then, uh, so it's it's darkest on the top half of the mouth because we can't, um, you know, there's a lot of shadow back there. If you open your mouth, you'll see it's really dark. And then the light comes down and it does kind of catch the top of the tongue. And so you do see a little bit of, of lighter area at the bottom of the mouth inside uh, to suggest that there's a tongue there. You don't have to get all detailed with the tongue. Um, but just a light area to, to imply. It's also kind of dark at the sides where the light can't quite get in. Um, no offense to people with sticky outy ears, but I, I, uh, I think that makes for a really fun, interesting character when they have sticky outy ears. It just adds a little more personality. Maybe makes it uh, a little less scary for some reason. Kind of reminds me of um, Dopey from uh, Sleeping Beauty. All right. And then uh, I made his, his mouth so big that it went past the bottom of his head. So I'm going to bring down his head a little bit. In fact, you know what? I might make him kind of somewhat chinless. Maybe he's, uh, you know, just got kind of a non-chin um, and it just goes from head to neck that just might kind of make him even more funny it's up to you if you want to add a big chin or a beard you guys go for it uh, next let's see I think next 
I'm gonna kind of um, I'm gonna go into the arm that's kind of nearest us first. Um, so kind of a curve there to suggest a little bit of that muscle, the big bicep. Cyclopses are strong, but I wouldn't call them lean or in shape. They, they wouldn't look like bodybuilders. They're, they're a little bit more flabby. Um, so upper arm, shoulder area, and then um, this area, the, the forearm. And so for forearm, I'm going to keep the forearm pretty thick. Usually on an arm you get really thin by the wrist, but uh, this is an area that we can exaggerate I think of his hands as really big and, and capable of grabbing a whole sheep. Um, his fingers are bent and they curl around. So you don't see the whole finger, you just see up to that first knuckle on a big club he's holding. Club's kind of peeking out back here behind his arm, and then coming down. Maybe you want to do some spikes or oh, on. good idea, Micah. If you want to add some spikes or bumps or make it look like, you know, it was a tree at one time and has some roots coming out, you guys go for it. Uh, that is a great place to add a lot of personality to your Cyclops characters. Is, is uh. Or you can put a tiny person like. A tiny person riding it. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> And, so there's that. Um, wouldn't hurt to add just a few, you know, stray hairs here and there on his arm. Just a few little wisps of, of arm hair. This is something I really had to learn as, as I illustrated more and more, as I drew more characters. Uh, I always felt like I needed to draw so much of of the hand, but when you when you see hands in real life, you do um, you know parts of the hand will block other parts of the hand, or if or if, if a character's holding stuff, you don't need to go too crazy. Um, just imply you know that there's fingers curling around something. You don't have to include every single finger. Maybe just a couple little ridges to suggest knuckles. That's up to you guys. Okay, um, now we're going to just kind of work our way back in space. So now um, his body, I want to have a really stubby, stout body. So um, let's see, I'm going to bring... He's wearing kind of this uh, caveman type of uh, off of one shoulder type of fur thing that he's made to wear, made out of sheep wool or something. Maybe you could do like tiger spots on it. Oh, place. maybe, yeah, if you want to go crazy, you can go ahead and do a pattern or tiger spots or maybe I'll put a belt across here. Um, one thing about wardrobe, to keep in mind, so costumes for your characters, they can really help accentuate um, or exaggerate the different parts of your character. So like this belt, if this belt is, is way up high, it just makes that character look all the more comical. So adding kind of a buckle thing there. Don't feel like you need to add the, the buckle. You can make your own, you know, maybe it's just a big piece of cloth that's wrapped around it. But uh, a belt there does kind of break up that space of that section and, uh, and helps exaggerate the character's kind of squat shape. Uh, now, the bottom part of his toga or his fur, just kind of kind of curve it around like that. Maybe a little bit peeks out back here. And uh, I'm just going to add some 
kind of, you know, let, letting my pencil kind of dance across the surface and giving it some kind of wool-like texture. And then, if there's room, I'm going to get this guy holding the sheep. So right here, this other arm, I'm going to start with a light oval. This forearm is coming out toward us. So we've got the his far shoulder coming down into his bicep, and most of his, his distant bicep is hidden from view by the forearm coming up. So elbow down here at the bottom, arm bends. And then, over top of this part of the arm, I'm going to do another oval. Now that's not going to make a lot of sense right away, because it just kind of looks like he has a big rock for a hand. Um, but I want this feeling that he's holding something. We're going to have him hold a sheep. And I want his fingers to kind of curl around this oval shape. Or you could have like him holding a tree or standing by a tree. Mike is right. I'm going to do that. So we're going to see just this top part of the finger and, and then it curves around. So top part of the finger and then it bends with the joints. And then I'm going to do that with another finger and another one and another one and then the knuckles extend past the the bottom of that oval and give him a couple little fingernails maybe the nice thing about a character like this is that they're ugly and so if you make a mistake and it ends up making him more ugly then you win okay and since uh since his hand is, his palm is facing upward, that means his thumb is out, so that's sticking out over here. And then at his the pencil in, is out. Oh, here's a pencil. So then in the in the top part of this oval, I'm gonna turn this into a sheep. And maybe since his thumb is here, I'll have the sheep head over here, and maybe the sheep is terrified. And looking up at, at the the creature. Bah! So think about you know uh, if you've ever watched a screaming goat compilation on YouTube, you kind of know the the noise that this sheep is making. There's his little legs sticking out. I'm going to have other legs, maybe one other leg here, stick, sticking out between the ogre's, or the cyclops' um, fingers. And then, of course, the sheep is very woolly. come back to that later but for now I think uh, I'll call that sheet done maybe a little bit of shading underneath the arm here back behind the hand I mean, you could do um, a mountain background behind oh yeah That'd be fun. yeah when you're doing these guys like, that's uh, a mountain goat. always feel free kind to personalize so if you want to add you know, an environment around your character. Adding a little bit of shading here and there. Okay, now, um, I think I'm gonna add his legs. This poor Cyclops doesn't have any legs. Of course, the legs are going to be back behind the big uh, uh, club. So, top of the leg, so the thigh is here, hidden by his fur, his furry cloak, whatever. And then, so the knee would be around here, and most of the leg 
will be hidden from view behind the club, depending on how big you have the club. So for now, I'm going to move on to this other leg. The other leg is going to, so top of the leg here, bottom of the leg, so the knee is kind of where his hand is. It's going to be wide. Think about like uh, parentheses, like a slight curve here and a slight curve here, just to suggest that he has big leg muscles happening. And then um, I'm going to start here and make oh, a shape like this. I, I, what do you call this shape? A, um, if you go off the edge of the page, that's fine. With a circle on top, which yeah. is a whole cone. I think probably in the knee. So think about his foot coming out toward us. It's not going straight to the side. It's not going straight to that side. It's coming out toward us, which is always really tricky. That's called foreshortening in the business. Um, I'm going to make the biggest toe first. And it's just an oval, nothing too special about that. And then next to it is, is a, just kind of a U shape for the next toe. And then we're just gonna keep adding toes. And honestly, if you have more toes than a typical human, that's okay because it's this big Cyclops creature. And you can add wee little details like toenails, maybe some furry stuff on his leg and then maybe a shadow underneath him maybe you can shade in that club so it really jumps out at, at us really dark So what I'm doing now is kind of shading in the club, but then I'm also taking an eraser and kind of erasing away some little highlight areas. That helps me, you know, the light is gonna hit the top of the club and the bottom side is gonna be in shadow. So, you know, really darkening the area at the bottom, lightening it a little bit on top, maybe adding some kind of bark or kind of wood grainy texture in there. All right. And now just thinking about areas where the light isn't quite reaching. Um, there are these places where one object meets up with another or one part of the body overlaps another, um, where you have areas that are kind of dark. Uh, I took some art classes and the art teacher called those occlusion, where the light can't quite reach, occlusion shadows. So just kind of dark there and then gets lighter as it goes out. Maybe that leg gets, you know, pretty well shaded in um, because the, the light isn't quite hitting it directly. Down below his head, down here, even if you don't have a chin, there's going to be some shadow that his head casts down onto his body. Okay. That about does it for this Cyclops. All right, thank you all for joining. I can see ours. Oh, you know what? I gotta show you guys my kids' art. Okay, let's start with Janice. There's Janice Cyclops. I'm about done. Yeah, yeah, that one's happier than mine. Nice job. <laughs> Leah's, oh yeah. He's a baby. <laughs> baby Cyclops. That's funny. He's only a ball. 
That reminds me of rattle. Uh, that reminds me of Jumbo from Boss Baby. Do you remember the oh, really fat yeah. baby? Micah, do you want to share yours? Oh, Micah's is scary. <laughs> Beware. Green Goblin. Um, Here's Micah. It's in the cliffs. Um, I want to show you guys real quick Micah's Cyclops. Ooh, it's that one has pack. like an eight pack. He's <laughs> as strong as all get out. So watch out. Um, thank you all for joining in. Glad you guys could draw a Cyclops with me. Uh, if you have a Cyclops that you'd like to share with the world, please feel free to post it in the comments below. And also, um, I, uh, I will be posting some of my favorites on my website, showhawks.com. Feel free to check those out as well. Um, and I think that's all I've got for today. So from my studio to yours, have a great day. I'll see you guys. Bye. Bye.